In the previous course, we used a private network that's dedicated point-to-point -point circuits connected with routers as the simplest framework for understanding packets, bandwidth on demand, routers, and network addresses. A router is a device that relays packets from one circuit to another on a first-come, first-served, packet-by-packet basis. Knowing which circuit to relay the packet to is the routing part of the story, also called packet switching and packet forwarding. Routers implement bandwidth on demand by not reserving a fraction of the capacity of the connecting circuit for each device, which is called channelizing, but instead giving each device the possibility of using the full capacity of the connecting circuit when there's something to transmit. Since devices generate traffic in bursts, and normally have nothing to transmit, many more devices can be connected to the circuit using bandwidth on demand instead of channelizing. This results in either lower cost or higher bandwidth for each device. Either implement the same apparent bandwidth as channelizing using a cheaper, lower speed connecting circuit, or implement higher apparent bandwidth for each device for the same cost as a channelized connecting circuit. In this course, we'll take the same idea and apply it again at the carrier network level, replacing the dedicated lines between customer locations from the simple framework of the previous course with bandwidth on demand service from a carrier between the customer locations. This brings the same benefit to the customer as it did to individual devices in the previous course, lower cost or faster performance. All of the carrier's customers in a city are given access to the same high-speed intercity circuits with the possibility of transmitting to other cities at full line speed, but only when they have something to transmit. This is called a packet network service provided by a carrier. This type of service is used by businesses, and when we say business, that includes government, organizations, and other carriers, to implement cost-effective, flexible, high-speed packet communications between specific locations. It is, of course, also the technical fundamentals of the collection of packet networks that are called the Internet. This course is dedicated to understanding the fundamentals of carrier packet networks and services and the terminology, configuration, and operation of MPLS. Lesson 1 is the introduction to the course. That would be this one. Lesson 2 is carrier packet network basics. We'll begin by understanding the basic structure of a carrier packet network and connecting to it including the provider edge and customer edge, and why provider edge equipment is sometimes placed at the customer premise. Lesson 3 is service level agreements, traffic profiles, and class of service. How a service provider and customer define and agree on what the customer will get for their money on an overbooked bandwidth on demand packet network. Lesson 4 is Virtual Circuits, an introduction to the critical ideas of virtual circuits and classes of traffic used as a powerful traffic management tool in all large packet networks. Lesson 5 is Quality of Service Requirement for Voice over IP, examining what kind of guarantees are required to carry telephone calls in packets so that the speech is reconstructed faithfully at the far end. Lesson 6 is MPLS. With the fundamentals in place, we'll go through the terminology and operation of MPLS, multi-protocol label switching, which is the virtual circuit technology used today by all carriers as a traffic management overlay on IP. It replaces the now obsolete predecessors X25, frame relay, and ATM. Lesson 7 is TCP IP over MPLS and VPLS. 
We'll trace the download of a file from a customer's server over a carrier's MPLS core network to the customer's client using TCP and IP, identifying all of the equipment and protocols in operation, where they're located, and how they interact. At the end of that lesson, we'll see how the M in MPLS stands for multi-protocol and how it's used to implement virtual private LAN service, VPLS, also called Carrier Ethernet, by carrying labeled MAC frames instead of the usual labeled IP packets. Then we'll look at the uses that MPLS is put to in carrier networks. Lesson 8 is differentiated classes of service using MPLS. How MPLS virtual circuits can be a quality of service mechanism to implement differentiated services. In other words, different service levels or classes of service for different types of traffic on the same packet network. Lesson 9 is integration and convergence using MPLS. Here we'll see how MPLS is used to achieve service integration with large cost savings implementing integrated access for business customers, all services on one access circuit. The same idea is used, of course, by carriers on their network core. Lesson 10 is managing aggregates of traffic with MPLS label stacking. This is a little bit of a technical discussion, explaining how MPLS is used to aggregate similar kinds of traffic with label stacking, carrying virtual circuits on virtual circuits, to be able to manage all of the instances of a kind of traffic, like all of the phone calls, as a single entity at the network operation center. Lesson 11, MPLS Services versus Internet Service, completes the course with a discussion of terminology used in sales and marketing of MPLS services and how that translates to reality. What exactly a salesperson is referring to when they say MPLS services and compare and contrast that to Internet Service. On completion of this course, you'll be able to explain the components and basic structure of a carrier packet network, including core, provider edge, access, and customer edge. List three ways carrier packet services are better than dedicated lines or ISDN for wide area networking. Define a service level agreement, class of service, and traffic profile. Define a traffic class and explain what a virtual circuit is and what virtual circuits are used for. You'll be able to identify the steps involved in communicating voice in packets and what transmission characteristics are critical to call quality. Explain the terminology specific to MPLS, including label edge router, label switched path, forwarding equivalence class, next hop label forwarding entry, and other things that go bump in the night, including defining the meaning and purpose of a label and identifying where the label is placed in the headers. Trace the flow of a message transported by TCP in IP packets over an MPLS network. Identify a key benefit of MPLS from the user's point of view. You'll be able to explain what differentiated services are and how MPLS labels can be used to implement diffServe and an alternative way of doing that. Explain how and why MPLS can be used to achieve service integration. You'll be able to show how MPLS can be used to aggregate traffic and you'll be able to explain what exactly somebody means when they say MPLS service and explain why IP service with a service level agreement would be a more accurate term and identify two differences between MPLS service and internet service and the pros and cons of each. Here we'll go over some instructions for using the MyTerracom learning management system. On a tablet or phone, the best experience may be achieved by going full screen. Click the full screen icon under Settings in Chrome. 
The course is composed of a number of lessons, which are loaded onto your computer one at a time by clicking the corresponding link on the menu of available lessons for the course on your MyTerracom Learning Management System dashboard. Each lesson begins with an overview and discussion of the lesson objectives. Then the lesson is presented in several parts, followed by several quiz questions to help ensure you understood key points. The skip forward and back buttons at the bottom of the screen may be used to navigate back and forth between parts of this lesson, and the slider also works. Play, pause, and mute buttons are also located at the bottom of the screen. You can go back through a lesson as many times as you like. You can close your browser, then log back in the next day or the next month, and you'll restart the same lesson until you click the Finish Lesson button to move to the next lesson. When you're finished the lesson, click the Finish Lesson button to go to the next lesson. After clicking Finish Lesson, please wait to see a screen with a large green check mark. This is confirmation back from the Learning Management System that your progress has been recorded. If it's been more than 30 minutes since you started the lesson, your session on the server may have timed out and you may see an error message. In that case, just log back in to continue. You can take any lesson anytime by setting the last lesson completed value on the lessons page to the appropriate value. Let's get started.